In this video, I'm going to explain how to simplify fractions. Now, simplifying fractions is reducing the fraction to the simplest form. But how is that done? You have to divide the numerator and the denominator until they are as small as possible. But remember, whatever you do to the numerator, you must also do to the denominator. That's very, very important to remember. In doing this, you won't change the value of the fraction at all. So let's look at this first one. What we're looking at is just this circle on the left to start. We see that there are four equal pieces and we're looking at the green, so there are two out of the four pieces that are green. We can simplify this, so we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator until they're as small as possible. And remember, we're doing whatever we're doing to the numerator, we're doing to the denominator. So, one divides both of them. That's correct. But, one is not necessary because two divided by one is just two, and four divided by one is just four. So you're just going to get the same thing. Can we divide both of them by two? Yes. 2 divided by 2 is just going to give us 1, and 4 divided by 2 is just going to give us 2. So you can see that 2 fourths is also equal to 1 half, and 1 half is the simplest form of 2 fourths because there is no other number that we can divide both of these by to make the numerator or denominator smaller. Say that we have 5 tenths and we need to simplify this. How would we do that? Well, we don't need to worry about dividing by 1 because if you divide 5 and 10 both by 1, they're going to be the same thing. Can we divide both of them by 2? No, because 2 does not go into 5. How about 3? Nope. 4, does 4 go into 5 and 10? No, 4 does not go into 5 or 10 either. How about 5? That should work, because 5 divided by 5 is going to be equal to 1, and 10 divided by 5 is going to be equal to 2. So 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. Let's look at another example. Can we divide these by 1? Yes, but that doesn't matter because it would still be itself. How about dividing the top by 2? We can divide the top by 2. How about the bottom? Nope, 9 is odd, so we cannot divide this by 2. Let's go to the next number. How about 3? 3 goes into 6, and 3 also goes into 9. So we can divide both by 3. Because 4 doesn't go into both of them, 5 doesn't go into both of them, and 6 doesn't go into both of them. So 3 is going to be our largest possible number that we're dividing by. And that's the trick. You want to divide by the largest possible number for both of them. So 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2, and 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. So 6 ninths equals 2 thirds. Now we have 9 27ths. 2 does not go into both evenly. 3? Yes, 3 goes into 9, and it also goes into 27. But is that the greatest number that can divide both of them? No, it's not. Because if you look at this, we know that 9 goes into 27, and 9 is going to be the biggest number that we can divide both of them by. So, if we divide the top by 9, and whatever we do the top, we're doing to the bottom. 9 divided by 9 is equal to 1, and 27 divided by 9 is equal to 3. So 9 27 equals 1 third. Let's say I give you 3 eighths. Let's simplify 3 eighths. Well, we know that 1 goes into both, but that would still be 3 eighths when we divide it. How about 2? Does 2 go into 3 evenly? 
No, two doesn't go into three evenly, but it goes into eight evenly. But we can't do that because whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. So let's try three. Three goes into three evenly. Does three go into eight evenly? No, three doesn't go into eight evenly. And three is as big as we can get to divide the numerator by. So three over eight is the simplest form. So three eighths is the simplified version of three eighths.